Welcome back to the OSM channel. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to use a ratchet strap. Now, before I teach you how to actually use the ratchet strap, I need to go over the basic mechanical principles of how it actually works. So with this ratcheting mechanism, we have two sides. We have the ratcheting side and the locking side. On the locking side, there will be a short piece of webbing. I call this the locking side because there is a spring-loaded tab in this slot that automatically engages with the ratcheting teeth. And that captures the progress as we ratchet this. So as I work this ratcheting mechanism, you can see what's happening. It's spinning the teeth. The spring-loaded tab is engaging with those teeth and therefore not allowing the tension to be released on the adjustable side of the webbing. Now, on the ratcheting side, beneath the top of the ratcheting handle, we have this release lever. So if you want to unspool this, basically lift up on this release tab, what you're going to want to do is straighten out the ratcheting mechanism. Now here's what you need to pay attention to, and this is how this actually works. So if we take a look at the ratcheting side handle, take a look at the metal. See how it gets wider right here and it's thinner here? Well, Right now it's not pushing back on that release tab. But as we get down to here, so as we straighten this out, this is going to act like a cam and it's actually going to push that locking tab off the teeth, therefore allowing us to release the tension in the spool and unspool the webbing. So again, I'm lifting up on this release handle, this release tab. Look at what that cam does. See how it pushes back that locking tab? So now, you may have to pull a little bit tight but with some force. We can unspool the webbing in the main spool there, and then we can pull this out. So this is something a lot of people struggle with. Once the adjustable end of the webbing becomes detached from the ratcheting mechanism, how do you thread it back through the spool? Well, it's actually really simple. So if your ratcheting mechanism straight, pull back on the release tab, close this, find the slot in the spool. You can actually adjust this so that it's perpendicular to the handle. So find that slot, take your webbing, thread it through the slot, take up as much slack as you need, then start ratcheting. That's all there is to it. And then when you want to release, pull up on that release handle, cam will disengage the locking tab, you're good to go. Now let's put what we just learned to work. So imagine this is the back of a pickup truck and I want to ratchet down this bin. So I would find a bed cleat, take my piece of webbing, lay it over what I want to secure. Take the ratcheting handle, I'm going to close it. Perhaps work the mechanism a little bit so I can see that slot. I'm going to feed the webbing through the slot. I'm going to take up on the slack. Make sure that the strap is over what I want to secure. Find my other tie down point, pull back on the slack. We have the ratchet over the load we want to secure, everything's all set. So what most people do is they pull up on the loose end of the webbing, and they get this really tight, and then they start ratcheting. And they're only able to get like maybe a half turn of the mechanism. So take a look at the spool. Note how the webbing is not wrapped around the spool at least one complete rotation. I'd recommend that that be wrapped around at least twice. So the way that the tension's held on the ratchet strap is twofold. For one, it's the progress capturing tab, the locking tab, which we talked about earlier. That prevents the spool from back spooling. But also what prevents the webbing from backing out of the spool is the friction of it being wrapped over itself. So right now, because this isn't wrapped around the spool multiple times, there's really not very much friction between the webbing and the spool. So as you go down the road and you hit some bumps, it's almost guaranteed that this will loosen up. So the proper way to do this, as opposed to taking up your slack extremely taut like this, let that ratchet sink down a couple inches, maybe four or five inches, and then you want to start ratcheting. So that's, that's one rotation there. That's two rotations there. Now I'll go for my final clicks. So now we're at about two and a half wraps. So now there's a ton of friction between the webbing and the spool, and now this will not loosen up. 
two final quick tips I have. One, and try and avoid your webbing from remaining flat like this. If you leave your webbing flat like this as you go down the highway at high rates of speed, because this is flat, it doesn't have any twist in it, wind's gonna catch it, it's gonna vibrate a lot, it's gonna rattle, tattle, tap, tat, and a few things will happen. The ratchet may loosen up due to the vibrations in the line, and two, you're gonna wear out your ratchet strap much faster because it's just flopping around like so. So what you should do, take the line, give it a little half loop, put a little twist in the line like that, and that'll help to take out probably 95% of those vibrations. Next time you go down the highway and you're looking at the uh, professional flatbed truck drivers, take a look at their straps. You'll know a true professional truck driver if his straps are twisted like this. And the final tip I have here is if your ratchet strap is going over a sharp edge, use an edge guard. I'll leave a link in the description down below as to what I'm talking about. But if you don't have something to protect this webbing from the sharp edge of the cargo that you're securing, that webbing's definitely gonna break. Your load's gonna become unsecure, could create a very dangerous situation. You definitely don't want that to happen. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one.